Hey, Matt. Okay, hi everybody. Um, welcome to our uh, discussion today. And I'm just bringing up the meeting notes. Let me um, put this link in the chat for you. Nope, that's the wrong link. That's the Octocat link. Um, everyone. There we go. Here's our document, and I will share it on the screen. And it looks like today is actually May 25th. So I guess I should create the. There we go. 25th and facilitator Sean next week is question mark. And I don't have a new funky question. Um, all right, people can fill out their names and I don't know, somebody has a better question. Is a hot dog a snack? Is a hot dog a sandwich? Ooh. Hey, I'm the anonymous badger. Just side note. Um, Elizabeth is the anonymous jackal, apparently. All right, and um, on the agenda is project badging. Let me just bring up, open, let me bring up some. Matt, do you want to talk to, who, who put the action item for project badging in there? Do you want to give an update? Yeah, I, mean, I know that we talked about it the last time that we met. And I think one of the things we were supposed to take a look at was the uh, DEI.MD and the recommended metrics for for that. And if, sure. if, you agree stop, with, sorry. Yeah. if you stop sharing, I can share my screen. Yes, I can stop sharing. I've learned a lot about Zoom in the last two years. I've been making updates to project badging, um, starting with the, the readme, or I'm sorry, just with the repository. Um, so I, I think people just honestly just comment as you see things. So this is not, you know, set in stone by any means. So with respect to project badging, because we are trying to balance like the, the potential volume of projects that may be applying uh, as well as our ability to review those projects like in terms of the number of badgers that we have available um, to us I, th I think we agreed that the project badge would just kind of be passing or not passing yes that we, we wouldn't did. have levels we did agree that that was the way to enter this space okay from my recollection Everybody and I saw Shoya was nodding her head. So, um, so this is kind of this is where I, I'm at with this. So at, at this moment, we don't have um, additional levels. So the project submission guidelines. Um, I'll we'll take a look at this requirements document in just a little bit. So that you have to fulfill these requirements before um, actually applying for a badge. Um, I think, would it make sense that we just follow the same kind of form approach that we have for event badging, where we would push people to a link for a form to fill out? Like, Matt, I'm kind of looking at you just in the sense of, would that be easy enough, do you think, to replicate for project badging? Uh, no, but uh, we have another option that's much better. <laughs> Uh, um, no. This is this is brought up by uh, I think Ayush had originally brought this up, but GitHub is now supporting issue forms, which is basically the same form, but it, in the submission of a GitHub issue. 
okay. which would cut the middleman and also make the process a lot less a lot fewer steps um to get through okay can you do you have an example of that yeah or, let like me, a um, link to it can you put it in the notes that i take a look at yeah They actually have a whole GitHub docs about it that's existed for several years. But we just nobody knew about it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, so the idea would be is that they fill out uh, an issue form, and it opens an issue in the same way that we have, kind of how it works for events, but just using the GitHub platform. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, I just dropped an, uh, a link in here. Um, let me turn it into a link. But uh, this is just the the GitHub uh, like you the link? Pay, oh I put the I link in I got it the I, I I think I should also created an example so I'm gonna try and find that okay um, if anybody would like to help me in this like in this like to create a sample form. So I, I um, I'll, I'll try and find that, and I'll, I'll ping on the chat if I do find. So it's a, it'd basically be a, a issue template type form map is what I'm seeing here. Yeah, it's just a fillable form, um, and then it turns it into Markdown just like we were doing manually before. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So open call again. If anybody on the call would like to give Matt or me a hand in terms of kind of what this form could look like using GitHub, that would be a great, uh, great thing. So, all right. I mean, I think one, one question I would have is if um, we've said that the, you know, we've stated that we want the repository to have uh, the DEI.MD in it. And a lot of quote unquote projects have they're, they have a repo org like badging or chaos and they would want to be badged as an org so do we explicitly recommend that they create a dot github slash dei dot md that would then be present i think if i'm remembering how this works in all of their repositories so i, mean, I think um, just hold we'll that to thought for, hold okay. that thought for a second got it so Christy, did you have a comment? I saw you unmuted for a second. Or no. Okay. Okay. Um, just in terms of kind of logistics as well, this point three, the, this was kind of around the, like you have the ability to make the application. You know what I mean? Like you and your community are, applying openly and transparently on behalf of your community. And we had talked a little bit about like, do you remember this, like you have to be a proven maintainer or you have to have commit rights or something like that. Do you remember that conversation from last week? Yes. Yeah, so I'm not qu quite sure. I have that in requirements, but what if, what if people think about this, that one of the requirements is that you have to post an issue in your in your community issue tracking system that says I'm applying for a badge and like I'm applying for a chaos badge. Like so you publicly declare within your community that you are applying for a badge. So it's like transparent to everybody. And then people could be like, hold on, who are you? <laughs> like, yeah, right. Why are you applying for a badge on our behalf? So like if Kubernetes was applying for a badge, they would have to post an issue somewhere in the Kubernetes community, the applicant would have to post an issue somewhere in the Kubernetes community saying, we are applying for a, a chaos project badge. What do people think of that? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Great. Okay. So um, I think that one way that we can do it first, I think that it's a very good idea to publicly declare that um, a community is applying for a badge. But other than uh, asking them to do like a GitHub issue, maybe we can uh, ask them to link a blog post or to link any kind of announcement they, that they have made in the community 
they are uh, they are applying for the badge. Probably uh, they have shared it on their social medias or in this course. So maybe um, maybe not GitHub mandatory, but any other kind of announcements would work as well. In my okay, opinion. so an issue could work, but also a blog post could work or a social reference could work or something like that. Is that, is that right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so in addition, really, also um, explain why we're asking for that in, in like just a follow-up sentence or you know a little preface in order to ensure transparency and okay. something like you know just so people understand why we're asking for it in case they don't. I mean, how do I put this? Maybe the, the reason is just to ensure. Um, I would say to ensure transparency and your role within the community or something like that. And, and or you know what I mean? Yes. Just that that's kind of a, a an off requirement, you know, yeah. something that might they might not expect to see. Okay. I mean, basically, the reason I think that we have it is to try to overcome this, like prove that you're able to make the application. That's really what it comes down to. Because I think it's really hard for us to track down like whether or not they're a core committer, you know. Hey, Foxy. My dog's asleep, dreaming <laughs> next to me. Um, okay, that's cool. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, all right. So then um, this is still just part of the submission guidelines. Make sure that you communicate with reviewers. This is just, I think this is normal. Um, the review ends when the checks are satisfied. Uh, no more feedback is put into action. There's an assigned badge, and then the badge is added to, to the master branch. So this is just kind of walking through what the guidelines are. Cool. All right, so then in terms of the requirements for the badge, all tell me if this, I, I think one of the questions is, does this feel like too much from a reviewer perspective, and is this enough to uh, assign a badge? This is the balance part. So you'd have to prove that your documentation is publicly available, um, that the, the repo can be cloned or browsed without registering, an issue tracker is readable without registration. A communication channel that's easily accessible. And then these things must be in your repository. So this is kind of your question. Yeah, so, yeah. So, like when you say Kubernetes so, earlier, they have between 50 and 100 repositories under that organization on GitHub. So if, if it's a project that's applying like chaos is a project and we have 40 some repositories now, we would probably want to badge at a, pro, at a project level at the org level. So that was my technical question about how we do that, because obviously I don't think we want to drive people to have to, you know, badge every single one of their repositories individually. No, we certainly don't have <laughs> the capacity to do that. Yeah. So let's um. We don't have to solve that now, but I think yeah, it's, let's, it's something to sort out. Okay, so let's let's um, yeah, just hold on to that for a second then. But um, that there is a README file that clearly dis defines the objectives of the project. This is from our conversation from last week. 
um, an OSI approved license, license, <laughs> license, license file, um, contributing guidelines file, a code of conduct file, and this is the diversity, equity, and inclusion file. Okay. Talking about the attention. So you have to have these five things okay. in your repository slash or community repo or something like that. You know what I mean? These have to be observable. So what do people think about these first? Because these are not like necessarily things, like they're not files that we're asking for. They're just characteristics of the project. Can you explain number two, the without registration? I, that was, it was kind of a residual from when you brought that repo, this repo back. That was just, that was already in there. That was there. Yeah, well, so I, don't, I kept it. Publicly available um, is the same thing as the repository it can be cloned and browsed without registration, really. Oh, it's, it's just a, a, is it a private public question? Yeah, and it, that's yeah. So I think one and two are actually this. I mean, well, I guess they're different um, because the documentation has to be publicly available, and the project contexts are, I would say, in a repository or repositories that are uh, public. Um, that would be a shorter way of saying that can be cloned and browsed without registration. So, so, any, so I don't have to be logged into GitHub if I want to clone a repository on GitHub. I believe. Do we want to just do we want to just merge those? Do we want to just merge those two together and say that the the project? Uh, I think they're a little repo different. must be publicly available, or the project itself must be publicly available. I think they are different things. Actually, one is documentation, and one is this basically the code. But don't we want both to be publicly available? Yes. Yes. But they might be separate bullets. Still, I kind of walk myself back from merging them because they are separate points so it's project just, project artifacts must be publicly available i mean project i mean project content says it for me must be publicly must be in publicly available repositories and that would include documentation no i think documentation being publicly available and published somewhere and what that the different the distinction is that you're using read the docs.io or some some kind of formal documentation publishing tool so that a person isn't like having to navigate a, a bunch of markdown files. So <clears throat> I'm not sure what channels are uh, that we're talking about this stuff in more granular detail in. Um, I, I just had a comment about, uh, it, it, I think it would be important to assume that the person uh, who's applying, I guess assume is the wrong word, but but go on, start from score one basically, uh, and, and provide the context that may be necessary for the, for the implementation, specifically in question five or section five, um, where we have, where we ask them for certain things, but some of those are uh, kind of can be considered jargon in some ways. And uh, if even if somebody's running a project, they might not know about things like a contributing guidelines file if they've never done one themselves, just to provide the um, information that's necessary to get those started. OK, so let me let me go to there's two points raised here. So first, can we I'd like to Matt, I hear your point and I'll get to it in just a second. So but the with respect to this, would it make sense to say documentation for your project is publicly available, project contents in a repository that's publicly available? Yeah. Works for me. Okay. And then, okay, so let me, I just, let me, Elizabeth, does that address your question? Okay. Okay, 
and then um oops, sorry and then matt yours was about this right in particular actually uh, all five items um probably need more information that uh define what we're looking for because we we have an item we say we're looking for this but what are we looking for out of it because i know if somebody just makes the file and leaves it empty or doesn't provide the correct information in it then we'd have to call them out on it too so we should probably also be responsible in providing the information on what we're looking for can you do you have like thoughts on what that might be for each one of these statements? Yeah, so so for the badging, updated version of the badging application, we actually provide the metrics for context and we also, and for each metric, we also provide references for uh, for what they, what it would look like to, to be implementing this correctly. So I can, I can put in some references here and there for- uh, you, yeah, yeah, that'd be helpful in the, I think maybe the last point I have, because we have a link out to a reference, but yeah, maybe just like some text at the first four points would be really yeah. helpful. Okay. And is it, would it be just like, and Ruth, I, oh, I see your hand too. Um, would it be like for the code of conduct file, like example code of conducts include? Yeah, uh, possibly also maybe an article or a blog post if, if it's available that says how to craft a good code of conduct. Okay, or something okay. Like that. No, that makes sense. Okay, that'd be great if you could add just a sentence or two on each of these. Um, Ruth? Yeah, so adding to Matt's point, I think like something like a checklist, just the way we have like on the DI um, event budget, we have like a checklist with like enough context on how, you know, um each of the metrics works so something like also like a checklist on each of these five items i think you know and and resources like matt said too okay um and so are you thinking ruth about the the checklist like um during uh, in the issue like from a reviewer perspective yeah, from a yeah. Yeah, perspective. Okay, like, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think each one of these would be a check component, like check, 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 and then these five things. And hopefully, I'm sure it does, but hopefully this approach allows us to build checklists in the issue. All right. These are really great comments. I don't know if there's anything in the chat that people would like to comment on Sean I saw you have some comments in there yeah I just I think I think these are the things that Matt's going to do anyway um okay but like the code of conduct there should be a pathway for addressing if there's harassment or an issue in the community in there um and I think for contributing guidelines maybe the, the simple way to evaluate those is there's some direction for a newcomer like if I'm totally new to the project when I open contributing dot md on the on the repo, I have some clue where to go, um, and it, this is these are the kinds of documents that it can get tricky to distinguish between. Like usually, there's a primary repo or two in a larger community with many repos. So, but we can come back to that. Okay, so time. so then maybe there were I think there were two points in what you just said. So one is um, I don't know what people's thoughts are on this, but like if if there's a code of conduct file in the repository, um, like how deeply do we investigate the code of conduct file? Like in terms of enforcement. So like, would there be, I, I just, I don't see us having the capacity of really getting to the point like that enforcement doesn't look solid or I think if they have a contact for okay. enforcement, that's deep. That's deep enough. I, I think we could encourage projects to specify um, the levels of response for different kinds of activities. But honestly, as a project, chaos is just doing that now our, ourselves, um, getting more specific. So, yeah, and from a review perspective, like we, it'd be a just a contact. Be, I think a contact, a like a big ask. Yeah. What's the path that I can follow so that I know that there, your code of conduct isn't just lip service? And I would suspect that, like Matt, what you're providing here, 
like we could use the github code of conduct guide and maybe make a list of three or four things that are necessary to be in the code of conduct for it to be functional and then just say this is here and this is here and go down that like a mini right. list for just the code of conduct okay so like a sub sub list within yeah. this list. okay could you do you have maybe a few thoughts on there <laughs> i'm just gonna um, keep asking for more <laughs> Uh, the, uh, the, I, I still need to add the guide on what you want to have in a code of conduct. This is just the GitHub. Um, okay. This is just the GitHub guide. So I'll I'll, I'll look at uh, what may be um, a solid reference because I don't. If anybody oh. has ideas, please put them in the chat too because I don't have any um, specific things I'd put in. I have in mind for like how to create a code of conduct. I'm thinking uh, the contributor yeah. covenant could be a good one. Yeah, I went to that um, for the first time in a while, and it looks like uh, they're also, um, I'll, I'll look into it. I'll have more information later. Okay, thanks, Matt. Yeah, Christy. I don't hear you. I see you're unmuted. But I don't hear you. Just mute it again. All right. Well, if you want to, I saw you unmute. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as you raise your hand, I will stop. As soon as I hear you, you just jump in. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, not that and this. All right, so this is yeah, all really for an example. I had something yeah. to say. Yeah. Um, for the um, di dot md file describing attention to, do we want to put a link to the um? Oh, okay. I I wanted to see if we want to put a link to like the um page that um shows di working group metrics or something but since we have this here yeah it's already enough context so and we had no uh, was it in the community call elizabeth that we talked about this because you had suggested like how you help newcomers like this is something that oh maybe it was in the i don't know, I don't know anywhere it was, it was somewhere yeah, it was that the audit seen. meeting yeah. the di audit Oh, the automate. Okay. So yeah, so there was, I haven't updated that yet, that there was, we might want to also include or in lieu of something like uh, put like how you support newcomers or the newcomer experience in here. And so really what this document is, is we would ask for a document that would, I think, look fairly similar to this, that would it would be a link to the if we just stuck with this template, but it would be a link to the project burnout metric. It would be a link to the inclusive leadership. Oh, yeah. And Ruth, you had suggested moving inclusive leadership up a little bit higher. There would be a link to each one of these metrics as published uh, by chaos. And then really all that we're asking for is a narrative from the submitter as to how the project is addressing, say, for example, project burnout, or a narrative from the submitter about how the um, project is supporting the newcomer experience. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's clearly explicated how the project is, is addressing each one of these. And that's it. <laughs> like, and then we just, we just read it. And, you know, it's, it's kind of like um, for the badging reviews, is it um, attendee and speaker demographic, like like event demographics? So when an applicant talks about event demographics, it's oftentimes just about it's a narrative about how the event addresses demographics. Is that correct? And we read the narrative, yeah, and we're like, that sounds great. Or we read the narrative and we're like, I don't, this doesn't make sense. Can you provide more detail? So that would it's similar to that that we're just reading the the narrative provided by the applicant. So how do people think of what do people think about that? Just in terms of asking for this document? I think yes, that makes sense. 
and I also think um, to mirror my earlier comment about maybe we should provide some context around why we're asking these things, like why these things matter yeah, to sure. diversity and inclusion, just in case there's questions or people aren't sure. So would it be why for each one of the metrics or why like at the, the highest level, do you think? I think I think each one of the metrics. That question maybe abstract, it's just a little, is that what you're thinking? Like one sentence thing. Okay. Matt, did you have a comment? I was just thinking, you mean like we could put the question in the abstract or something like that? It might be too much with the abstract. Question would be fine. Um, and I was, you were talking about, I'm looking at all the metrics we have available to us when it comes to both project and governance. Yeah. Um, and we have like, we do have project demographics. We also um, have that code of conduct for project under governance that I think would be good to ask more about the code of conduct and maybe uh, critique it more once we have the, those check those first checks in line too. That's a, and, uh, yeah, go ahead. Um, I was just thinking it might also really be good, like we've done, been doing an event badging to prompt for uh, prompt for links or evidence of like the, what they're talking about so that they can back it up in their, uh, no, in their like documentation. That. Yeah, so like if you have additional support beyond the narrative, go ahead and provide yeah. that kind of thing. Yep, I like that. Um, okay. Should we include right. the project demographics? I feel like that piece is really important with regard to diversity. Certainly, yes. Please, like in the notes, if you could add okay. what you think should maybe be in that list. Because I just, I really just kind of, this took like one minute and I just grabbed four things, mostly just for, just as, just to provide like a, uh, some guidance. <laughs> So like in, you know, in the bi.md file, um, a few notes, ask for additional links, if available, include um, newcomer, experience or whatever. Um, Project demographics, right? Um, Matt, you had maybe suggested this, if I understood you right, that this could be a place where we ask for more detail on the code of conduct. Yeah, and I'm thinking uh, it doesn't look like we have metrics that cover specifically newcomer experience yet. Sorry for the background noise, but uh, I'm a little. Uh, not too sure about including that before it's before it's a metric because this all has to be backed up by the metric. Yep. Maybe we could make a metric real fast. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah. <laughs> um all right. And Matt, I actually like your idea of the code of conduct detail here as opposed to like here basically we just need to make sure they have one and that has the minimum requirements of like what we would consider a usable code of conduct and then we can get the more critique on it yeah so then it right exactly so then on the dei.md file you can ask for things like do you have a reporting person do you have enforcement like whatever those details might be mm -hmm. okay cool and i think you know might be useful after after we've you know, specify this all out to provide a, I guess, a model or an exemplar repository that exists solely for the purpose of showing what an ideal, you know, sort of an idealized set of rules might be or right. a sufficient set of rules might be. Because there might be organizations that just, they want to do the right thing and they don't know which direction to go. And, and I think the links that Matt provided give give a lot of that anyway so maybe we don't need an exemplar organization okay um that's fair uh shoya um so uh if this diversity uh this dimd file is something that we are trying to encourage project repository to have because um i just um i was looking at some of the 
uh, GitHub repository that with almost um, the most popular repositories with uh, just um, by stars. I, I was checking them and uh, I, I don't think even they have this MD file right now because oh. because this haven't been a very prevalent thing. You so. are correct. We are asking. This is a new file that we are asking for. Okay. As part of okay. the application process. Okay. Now I understand. This yeah. is great. All right. Um, uh, I had one other thing. Um, I don't know. This is, this probably gives me enough to work on. I thought I had one other comment, but uh, this is really helpful. So thank you, everybody. Um, I will have more next week. All right. And, um, thanks, everyone. For Elizabeth. So um, yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, I, I was just saying I dropped that um, that that sample, and we'll drop it in the chat here. I just thought it was really really cool, and we could really use it. <laughs> As far as that uh, the issue form sample, it turned out pretty good. I had to drop that in there because I had talked about it earlier, and I, I felt incomplete if I didn't. So, yeah, not. I'm sorry, by the way. Where where did we land on the detail for the code of conduct? Where is that? Where is that work going to be done? Oh, uh, um, I'll let someone else say. It. There's Matt. You shared a link down here under the the details. For what yeah, so as I understand it, Kevin, we were going to be working on uh, like asking the minimal information in the in the in the opening questions, and then also once we get into the review, we start asking more questions about what we'd like to see in the code of conduct. Okay, so the the code of conduct for a project is a metric that we have defined, mm -hmm. and we'll be using so, that. Okay, so I'm I'm just saying the detail that we're talking about wanting to provide, we could just we could provide that in the metric that we've defined. Right, yeah. so that work could be done in the metric rather than creating a uh, separate document is, is what I was putting forward. Got it. Okay, thank you, everybody. Yeah. So are there any other items? We have 10 minutes available. If they're um, in the past, we've looked at open issues and PRs. I don't know if we do that every time, but we could certainly do that. With I had an action that. item. Okay. I had an action item from the last meeting to look at uh, time inclusion. Yes. Uh, there is a pull request in for that. Maybe we could look at that. Okay. No, I didn't want to I don't know how to. Okay. So. I got the seven. Uh, so the seven. Uh, is it a pull request? Kim? I'm sorry, Kevin, you say it's a pull request? Yes. Yep. There's a pull request for uh, it's part of the uh, metrics revision. I see at, uh, from 14 days ago. Yeah. Revise update event code of conduct. Um, I'll share my screen. Uh, time inclusion for virtual events. Okay. Uh, the other one. Go back, Sean. Okay, I was on the wrong pull request. This one. That one. Okay. And then um, there that is. Much. Do you want to talk about what you did, Kevin? Okay, so so Tejas had gone through and uh, made changes based on Matt's uh, recommendations. Yeah. And there were there were three recommendations that Matt had made that uh, Tejas didn't didn't address. So I went back and addressed those those three issues. Uh, and those the maybe maybe we can peek at the uh, comments to see what Matt's uh, uh, yep we can what that. those issues were. And right so um, up, John. yeah. Do we need to look at the issue? Ah. I think it, he put it. Oh, in there it is. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, how network bandwidth is? Uh, yeah. How bandwidth is part of how network bandwidth is part of the metric? 
how low bandwidth is part of the metric. And then there was an also also an issue with the uh, the the survey list for the uh, presenters. So I added text in the description to account and describe uh, how network network bandwidth is an issue for time inclusion. Uh, and then I also adjusted the survey list for the presenter to make it a little more explicit and to match the uh, uh, attendee survey list that was already there. Okay. So if you I go was to the PR, go I? back to the PR, yes, I can. And then go to the files changed. And so Kevin, you is it there in the description that you did it? Yeah, that that big old block of green text there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then I do have a comment in this pull request as well. Like I have added a considerable amount of text about network bandwidth. Mm -hmm. uh, so I am I am wondering if we have changed this metric enough where we need to possibly send it back through the review process. Or if, or if this text is just explicitly stating what was implicitly already there. I'm just reading it, so. Yeah. I think that you're just drawing out what was implicitly there would be my guess. Meaning not new review. Because we haven't I, I felt it was kinda it was kind of borderline for me. Yeah. You haven't um, added I was on the fence, but I mean you've added like detail, <laughs> but yeah. you haven't added any like new thing. You've added the detail necessary for us to assess whether this this um, time inclusion is really addressing the detail. I think it was un, yeah, obviously non-specific earlier, and a reasonable person would think that all of these things are part of what's in the less explicit statement that it's replacing. Yeah, was there, I think another, it's, was there another text block, Kevin, that you had changed, or was that the biggest one? Uh, you just some small stuff in the uh, okay. uh, surveys, data yeah. collection surveys. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And those just reflect the some of the details that you added. Yeah. No, I don't see this as a fundamental change. I really don't. Okay. Yeah. I'm I'm cool with that. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. So uh, I I can agree with that for sure. I think so, when when we're doing these, we should we should always have that discussion if uh. If a block of text is added. Yeah. So is the consensus to merge? Yeah. Oh. And then there's an issue that goes with this as well that we should probably peek at real quick. Is that was that the issue this one? So we created a pull request that was done. So we need to add something to the metric revision release notes, we, or we do, do we not? We agree because that we don't need to. Yeah. Right. So I can just check. I'm just going to check that off because we just don't need to. Do we need? Are there any updates to the metric spreadsheet required here? Uh, no. yes, actually, we we need to we need to add the date of last uh, review. Okay. Uh, which would be uh. Five, you'd listed 522. Yeah. On the today's 525. I don't think it's important enough to like modify the pull request or make a separate commit. I think we're, we're close. And that is when it was edited. Um, so, okay. I guess before this issue can be closed, then we need the metrics update, the spreadsheet updated. And 
the translations repository probably needs to get a notice to um, adapt the translation to the new language. Yeah, this will have to be added. And then, sure. and then if you can, if you just check any of these that you think that you should check, Kevin. Okay. I, I don't, I don't presume to. I added it to the spreadsheet, just so you know. Okay. So what updates to the here? metric spreadsheet. All right, that's done then. And so we just, um, does Ke Kevin, do you want to take the filling out of this checklist or is there anyone else who would like to take this on? Yeah, I, we, don't, I, we don't need to do candidate release, do we? Nope. Because we just do nope. that's, an, that's another one that uh, it's, uh, it's only if we send it back into the release cycle. So, and I do have a, I have an edited version of this checklist that I have uh, put in a PR for uh, in, oh, I think, the, in the value working group. Okay. Uh, if someone can take a look at that PR, if that I one will. gets merged, I will then go and move that. Okay. I will move it into the uh, community repo as a template, and then we can start pulling it into the other working group repos as well. I'll take Is a look it? at that. Okay. So we don't need to do that. Matt, Matt's going to take a look at it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Well, we're, we're at time then. I appreciate all that work, Kevin. And appreciate everyone's participation in our discussion of project badging. I think that's going pretty well. So thanks to everybody for that. Anybody else want to sign up to be coordinator next time? I can do it another week if nobody else wants to sign up. I'll do it. Um, okay, Matt. Matt G. We need to we need to solve this sandwich problem next. Uh, I said a hoagie put, is a sandwich too. I, I put that I on the agenda. That. Is a hamburger a sandwich? I think so. I think so. Anytime there's bread and stuff in between, yeah. it's a sandwich. So if you said I'll, I'll have a hamburger sandwich, please. I think see so, yeah, people look at you like funny. <laughs> What, what country are you Canadian is probably <laughs> where are you from kiddo <laughs> all righty all right talk to everyone later all right bye bye, bye.